Hi, I'm John Strohmeyer with Strohmeyer Law, and today we're talking about frustration and delay, one of my four horsemen of the estate planning apocalypse. I've talked about the four horsemen of the estate planning apocalypse before, unneeded costs, family fights, frustration, and loss of assets. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about that family frustration and delays. Now, an incomplete plan is going to cause more stress on your family situation after you're gone than you can probably imagine. Even if we wanted to put a dollar amount on it, it really is hard to try and say, well, it's going to cost you this much. What we're looking at is lost time and just the frustration of not being able to get anything done because something has gone wrong. Usually these frustrations and delays come from not having things set up in such a way that the people who are left behind know what to do and where to find things. So today, we're going to be spending a little bit of time talking about how you can avoid the frustration and delay that will come after somebody passes. Now, nobody wants to leave a mess when they're gone, but there is going to be some frustration. Our job while we're still here is to line up things as easily as possible so that the folks who are left behind know what to do and when to do it. We don't want to have any surprises. I frequently say to clients that the only time somebody likes a surprise is when it's their birthday. And even then, they may not like it. We don't want to have any surprises left for our family when they're trying to pick up the pieces after we've left this earth. Now, before we get into this, I want to mention that my firm does have a free five-day estate planning starter kit for you. It's a five-day sequence of emails that'll help you think about the big questions that you need to be thinking about. Check out the link in the description to get started on that. So as we think about this, there are a lot of questions you can be asking yourself as you look at your plan and your family to help identify the areas that will be frustrating for them or may cause some unneeded delays. So think of this as not necessarily a checklist, but a probing of what goes on in your family. You may have specific situations in your family that have other questions that need to be asked. So treat this as a way of getting started. One of the first things we want to think about is, where is the original last will? Here in Texas, having that original document is important. In fact, it's so important that there's a state law that says within 30 days of somebody dying, you're actually supposed to send that original will to the county clerk in the county in which the person lived. Why? Well, if their will exists, we want it going to one central place. We don't want to have a situation where somebody says, hey, I've got this will. It doesn't exactly say what I want it to say. Maybe it names somebody as a different executor, or maybe it's giving a gift to somebody I don't necessarily want to pay. Maybe then I'm going to hold on to that will and see what happens. Maybe nobody will notice that this isn't the right will. That's the reason for the state law. We want to make sure that we get it into the county clerk's hands as soon as possible. This is going to make sure that we know what the wills are. and If there are competing wills, we can at least see which ones are out there. But if we don't have that original will, we start running into some hiccups. The problem with not having the original will is we don't know if that's actually the will that the testator had in mind. How do we know that person didn't tear up the will and throw it away because they didn't like it anymore? State law assumes here in Texas that if we don't have the original, that the person destroyed it. Now, there are ways to get beyond this, but it does involve more work for everybody involved. So the executor is going to have more work getting ready for the hearing. We're probably going to have to line up more witnesses to go to that hearing. And if you've cut somebody out of the will, it's going to give them a chance to come in and challenge the will saying, well, of course they got rid of it. They cut out me, their favorite beneficiary. Clearly, that's not what they intended. So when we're thinking about how we can avoid frustration, making sure not only do you have the will, but where is the original located. We want to know exactly where it is and make sure that the copies that we have are copies and not the original documents. Frustration point number two to think about. What's going to happen to your body when you pass on? We spend a lot of time planning for all sorts of parties, but rarely do we think about what happens to us for our final party. I'll tell you, when my dad passed last year, one of the nicest things that he had done for me and my sisters was he had already prepaid for his cremation. What it did was take one source of frustration of the five of us having to agree on something, and it just took it out of our hands. Dad had already paid for it, and so we didn't have to think about it. Really, all we had to do was phone the company that he had paid, and they came and took care of the rest. But putting it into a larger perspective, Dad had taken off the table one of the things that we were going to have to decide in pretty quick order. 
we didn't have to come to a decision or try and figure out what he wanted. He told us by making that decision for us. You can do the same. If you have strong thoughts, let people know. If you want to prepay for things, there are ways to do it. Even just writing out, please bury me, please cremate me, or please don't fight over this, just take care of me as cheaply as possible. Whatever you want, making that decision for them so that they don't have to, or possibly even create a frustration point at a already tough time for your family. Another thing to think about when you pass is what's going to happen to your bank accounts? One of the most important things to think about is that initial liquidity available to your family and surviving spouse after you've passed. Most of the couples that we see come in with joint bank accounts, but what they haven't done is set their accounts up as joint tenancy with rights of survivorship. This is a very important point to make sure that your surviving spouse or even a partner or children or whoever's going to need that money quickly if you're not there to open the bank account for them. We want to make sure that they have immediate access to the right amount of funds. Doesn't mean we have to set every account up this way. If there are accounts that are needed to keep the lights on, mortgage payments going out, and food on the table, you're going to want to make sure that somebody has immediate access to that. Even if they're a joint account, almost every bank is going to freeze that account the moment they've heard that one of the account owners has died. Why? The bank's looking to protect themselves from somebody taking the money out when they weren't entitled to it. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to go and look for joint tenancy with right of survivorship, at least here in Texas. What that does is act as a sort of reciprocal beneficiary designation from the account so that when one of the persons dies, the other owner has immediate access to it and can keep on using that account. The good news is they have immediate access to the account. The downside is this is not going to be an account that's available during probate. Again, remember to talk to your advisor about this before you make this a feature of all of your accounts. Not everything and not everybody needs to be using these sorts of accounts. Another frustration point, identity theft. This is something that will benefit you now as well as after you pass. You want to make sure people aren't taking advantage of you. So going to the three credit reporting agencies and putting a freeze on your account is not only free, but it's something you should really do. We're, even if we are applying for credit, it's better to lock these accounts up so folks can't come in and take advantage of your account and start opening accounts in your own name. Imagine the frustration of having accounts fraudulently opened in your name. You're still responsible for it, and while you may not ultimately be responsible for the charges, you're still going to have to jump through the hoops to prove that it wasn't actually you that ordered that $7,500 worth of Taco Bell late at night, three states over. You want to take that off the table as a frustration point for yourself. Another point to think about is your agents and your fiduciaries, so your trustees and executors. Have you told them that they've been appointed in your documents? You want to make sure that they know if something happens to you, they're the ones you're trusting to be in charge. So not only telling them that you've named them, but where you're hiding the original documents so that when the time comes, they know where to get the documents so that they can prove that they have the authority to act. As we think about possible frustration points, you also want to think about the other people in your life. Not only your children, but you may be a member of the sandwich generation where you're taking care of your parents because they're at that stage in life where they need a little bit of extra help. If something were to happen to you, who's going to take care of them? Think through what the frustration points are going to be for those who depend on you if you're not there. How can you make sure that there's going to be continuity of care for them so that if something happens to you, they're not left in the lurch? One last thing to think about, using a password manager. A lot of our clients keep their passwords in their head, which means that their passwords get reused and ultimately include the same sort of discoverable information about them. Pets names, children's names, birth dates, street names. These will allow a smart hacker to really have a good guess at what your passwords may be. When you move everything to a password manager, not only are you going to get some additional security because they will randomly generate those passwords for you, the best password managers will also include browser extensions so that they will automatically enter those passwords for you when you're using your computers to go to those websites. So even though the password manager is going to generate some gobbledygook 28 character random strings for you as passwords, you only have to remember one. This just cuts down on your own frustration 
as you try and remember what that password is. Ultimately, this Horseman of the Estate Planning Apocalypse can cause problems for you not only now, but later for your friends and family. You want to make sure you're thinking through what could go wrong now, as well as later when you're not here. These are the little tweaks that'll help you to keep things in line and ultimately make your life a little bit easier. Don't forget to check the other videos on the three other horsemen of the estate planning apocalypse in this video series, as well as the other videos we have on other estate planning topics on this channel. Thanks so much for watching. If you've got other questions about this, go ahead and leave a question in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.